One thing I've learned from covering the games industry for over 15 years now is that people get very angry about the letter A. The CEO of Ubisoft, Yves Gamo, recently described Skull and Bones as a quadruple A game. That descriptor set the internet ablaze with a lot of mockery, especially after the game released to middling reviews and a general shoulder shrug from players and critics alike. You will see that Skull and Bones is a fully fledged game, he said. It's a very big game, and we feel that people really see how vast and complete that game is. It's a really full triple A, quadruple A game that will deliver in the long run. But what do those A's actually mean? For many, the amount of A's a game has sets an expectation for a certain amount of quality or the next cutting edge title. A's could also mean how much you should expect to pay for a game. A's could also mean it's just going to be another generic looter shooter, battle royale, or I guess the new trend is extraction games. For publishers, it's a marketing term to hype players up for the next big thing in gaming. If you remember it, when Microsoft initially announced the new Perfect Dark game, they did so by also announcing a new studio behind the project, The Initiative, the world's first quadruple A studio. That's gone well. So what is it with A's then? Why is there so much focus put on how many A's a game has by both publishers and players? The system of designating games as A, double A, AA, or triple A, or now apparently quadruple A, came from the bond industry. The higher the amount of A's, the safer your investment which is a tad ironic considering the state of the AAA games industry at the moment with layoffs, cancellations, high-profile failures, and growing lack of excitement, at least at the major publisher level. In reality, those A's in the games industry just stand for the amount of budget being put into a project. It's not really indicative of anything when it comes to the quality of a game. A game could be AAA and technically have a bigger marketing budget than a production budget, for example. There's also tiers of publishers that we tend to categorize by A's, you have your AAA publishers like Capcom, EA, or Ubisoft, publishers like Focus Entertainment, Devolver Digital, or THQ Nordic are in that AA realm, and lastly there's the more indie level publishers such as Raw Fury, Humble Games, or Finji. Even so, there's no agreed upon amount of money anymore on what's considered AAA, AA, or even indie. Dave the Diver was considered indie at the Game Awards, despite having the backing of a major games publisher, Nexon. Final Fantasy VII on the original PlayStation is regarded as one of the very first AAA video games, as it had a development budget of around $40 million and an additional estimated $40 million put towards marketing the game. Adjusted for inflation today, that's around $150 million. Today, a AAA game like The Last of Us Part II reportedly costs around $220 million to make. Skull and Bones apparently costs $200 million. The much criticized Star Citizen has amassed over $600 million in funding from investors and fans alike. The ill-fated Immortals of Avium cost $125 million. Who knows how much money it's taken to sustain games like Rainbow Six Siege, Destiny 2, Fortnite, or the many other live service games built to bring in endless amounts of money. Whatever AAA used to mean to people has become meaningless outside of money spent on a project. People laugh at the term quadruple A, but at this point I'd view any live service game with an endless budget as a quadruple A game. Hell, looking back at Final Fantasy's budget, we might as well have 6 or 7 A's at this point when adjusting for inflation. What was once just a business term to quickly give the impression of a project's budget has now been turned into a marketing term for publishers or even content creators who use A to try and describe the industry as a monolith that's failing and pushing out one generic live service game after another. It's a narrow-minded view of the industry that's incredibly diverse in its range of offerings from solo developed indies all the way up to the thousands of people that make Call of Duty games year after year. It's also a view you can't really blame people for having when the industry at large is so focused on just a select few titles year after year and how competitive it is for games to garner attention for press and consumers alike. As the tools that make games have continued to become more advanced and more accessible to smaller teams, AAA budgets and production values aren't just limited to the major publishers anymore. There's a whole new sector quietly forming of independent studios with AAA level budgets being formed by industry veterans behind a lot of your past favorite games and studios that have bled talent year after year as publishers continue to trace trends and shareholder value over retaining their talent and institutional knowledge. Again, just because these studios have sizable budgets doesn't mean their games are going to be massive hits or be the kinds of experiences you're looking for. With the amount of studios that have been announced over the last few years, there's certainly going to be many of them that fail as well. Just in the last couple weeks we've already heard of multiple studios canceling games or shutting their doors entirely before they've even got their first project out the door. Unfortunately, that's just a reality of game development, especially right now with funding drying up for new studios and games at every level of development. 
Right now, when we think about AAA games in the studios, we think about layoffs, lack of originality, unsustainable targets, and greedy publishers. As this new sector of studios starts to come into focus, with actual developers running them and not C-suite executives who look at spreadsheets all day, maybe we'll get back to more sustainable budgets, creativity, and AAA, <clears throat> quadruple A level games that push the industry forward in exciting new ways. Until then, when you hear a publisher proclaim their game is a quadruple A game, there's really no need to get in a huff about it. It doesn't mean anything. No amount of budget given to a game will magically make it good. Unless it's a game I'm working on. What are you scratching, your brain? Yeah, because it's huge. 